Hi girls, welcome back to GB. Believe it or not, we're now into December and I'm sure you've all got your Christmas trees and everything up and you're all ready for the big day. But remember, it's not just about Christmas and Christmas tree. We all have to think, remember that it's, that it's Jesus' birthday as well. And just remember that he's the greatest present that we can ever get. But we're going to open tonight with our prayer just as we normally do. So if we all just close our eyes. Be with us, O Heavenly Father, by day and night, at work and play, at home and in school. Keep us pure and gentle in word and thought, and grant that we may be brave, happy and cheerful always, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Well, girls, wonder what animal we're going to have this week. We had the big roaring lions last week. I wonder what it's going to be. Is it going to be a big animal or is it going to be a small animal? We'll just have to wait and see. And I'm going to hand over to Kay to tell us this week's story. Hi, girls. Well, tonight we're not going to hear about an animal. We're going to hear about something really small and it's an insect and it's an ant. Now, ants are very tiny. They're even smaller than my, the wee nail on my finger. And you'd see them scurrying about in the summer and they'd be busy working. Well, we're not going to hear about a working ant. This one's really lazy. And this story is called The Lazy Ant. Let's hear what he gets up to. Beside an old dusty road long ago, there was an ant hill. In and around and all over that ant hill were thousands of ants working like crazy. They were storing up food for the winter. They had to find food and carry it back to the ant hill, pack it carefully inside, then go back and get more. While they bustled along, they chanted a working song. Let's work, don't shirk. Just work and work and work. Bring in the stuff, more than enough. Be extra tough, be ready and rough. Huff and puff with all your spuff. Work with perk. Let's work and work and work. You guys have gone berserk, said one ant to all the others one early morning, as he watched them rushing by. I'm not going to work anymore, he added, as he sat down near the road. The other ants scolded him as they passed by. Hey you, get busy, they said, or you're nothing but a lazy ant, or get up and start huffing and puffing with all your stuff. But it was no use, the lazy ant didn't budge. And there you see all the ants beavering away and hurrying along. Can you spot the lazy ant lying beside the road? And he's lying with his arms behind his head. Wow. Let's see what he gets up to next. That afternoon, the other ants quit working long enough to gather around the lazy ant. Their faces looked heavy and sombre and they said to him, We've decided you can no longer be an ant. What do you mean, he said. You're a disgrace to the name ant. Everybody knows ants are good workers, but no one would guess that, that looking at you. If you won't act like an ant, then you can't be an ant. They turned to go back to work saying, we're busy now, so goodbye, you lazy whatever you are. The lazy ant didn't know what to do. He stomped out into the middle of the road. He turned his back once and shouted to the others. What do you expect me to be? A hippopotamus? or a whale, or an elf ant. But no one took notice of him. So he, they, he turned and just kept marching on. He had taken only a few steps with each of his six legs when suddenly something blocked the sun above him. He looked up, far up, and saw that he was in the shadow of a man and a child. Oh no, he cried, I'd be stepped on, I'd be crushed, I'd be killed. I've got to get out of the way. He darted to the right side of the road. Then he changed his mind and dashed to the left. Then he changed his mind again and rushed right back. Then he turned again and lost his sense of direction. So he just kept running in circles. Finally, all six of his tired legs went out from under him and he dropped in the dust. 
Looking up, he saw the feet of the man and the child standing still beside him. Between the child's sandals, there was a crumb. See? Little crumb of bread that he spotted. Lifting his eyes higher, he saw the man's purple robe. Raising his eyes even higher, he saw two noble faces looking down and on the man's head was a golden crown. It's the king, the outcast. He heard the king say, never be lazy, my son, but learn to work hard like the ants do. In fact, let's watch this one for a moment. The two faces stared down at him. So the ant got up on one leg and then another, then another and another and another and the last one too. And he raced to the breadcrumb. That's the king and the little ant starting to get motivated to go and look for the crumb. With all his might, he lifted the crumb high above him. It was heavy and hard to balance, but by putting one foot in front of the other and then another and then another and another, again and again and again, he carried the crumb all the way back to the ant hill where the other ant smiled at him. He stored it up carefully inside. Then he turned to go back for more. Outside he saw the king with his son proceeding down the road and he heard the king say, now that, my son, is a real ant. Work hard like him and you'll be wise. And there we are. The king had told his son to be like the ant and work hard. Well, girls, did you enjoy that story? We've got a wee tiny, tiny animal. Really, really small one this week. Considering some of the other animals that we've talked about over the week, over the other weeks, sorry, it wasn't an animal, it was an insect, wasn't it? But our picture then is about ants, and here we have three of them trying to carry a banana. Now, I think even three of them couldn't manage a banana, but then again, they're very, very strong, and they always work together. So they do, except for our lazy ant, but I think our lazy ant realised that he had to work in the end, because otherwise they weren't even going to let him be part of their colony, so they weren't. And just like us, we all have to work together too sometimes, just to get things done. But we're all gonna, now going to sing a song, and Deborah's going to lead us in her song today. I wonder what it's going to be. Okay girls, we're going to sing a song that reminds us about the ants. Because sometimes we, we refer to ants as being an army of ants. So we're going to sing, I May Never March With The Infantry. So, ready for the actions? Watch Kay and Lorraine for the actions, if you can't remember them. Go! We hope that you've enjoyed colouring all these things in because we have enjoyed seeing them. The second thing I want to say to you is the GB Executive have now decided that it will not be safe enough for us to resume face-to-face -face GB from the 1st of January. 
they will now make a decision mid-January at their next meeting to see what the best way forward is for us for the rest of the session. With this in mind, we're going to try to call out with you all within the next week or so to distribute some packs for Christmas. We know that this is a very trying time for everybody, but we know that we want to meet back in GB when we're safe and we pray that this will happen sooner rather than later. And now we'll just close in our prayer. Oh Heavenly Father, we pray that you will keep us safe over the next couple of weeks. We pray, Lord, that there will not be a rise in this pandemic after Christmas and that soon we will be able to meet with all the girls face to face, running about in our halls, enjoying ourselves and getting back to normal. We pray, Lord, now just be with us all. Keep us all safe. Remind us all to keep our hands washed, to keep us all a safe distance from everyone else. We pray, Lord, that we will be able to meet again soon. For it's in your name we ask it. Amen. Good night, girls. Stay safe.